Hey everyone, it's Josh with another gaming laptop video. This one is going to be about upgrading your RAM with a laptop that has one stick of memory soldered to the motherboard. Uh, the one I'm using here is the Asus Zephyrus G15. I'm making this video because there's a lot of inaccurate information out there on RAM and a lot of misconceptions that people have, so I hope this helps clear things up here. One of my biggest goals is to help provide accurate and realistic information to the gaming laptop community, so it would really help out if you could leave a like and subscribe, and let me know at the end of the video if this helped. Now let's go ahead and get started. So here we have the Asus Zephyrus G15. Like I said, this could apply to any gaming laptop with one stick of memory soldered, but the one I have here is the Ryzen 5900 HS model with the NVIDIA RTX 3070 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that is eight gigabytes soldered and eight gigabytes replaceable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the biggest misconception out of the way. There's a popular belief that if you swap the replaceable RAM with say a 16 gigabyte or a 32 gigabyte for a total of 24 gigabytes or 40 gigabytes, then you'll lose dual channel performance because the RAM can only run in dual channel when both sticks are the same size. Now this is simply untrue. What actually happens is, for example, uh, you pop in a 16 gigabyte stick in that upgradable slot for a total of 24 gigabytes, you will be running in dual channel for the first 16 gigabytes of RAM that is utilized at once by your machine. If more than 16 gigabytes is utilized, then the remainder will run in single channel. So for example, if you have a program using 20 gigabytes of your 24 gigabytes of RAM, then 16 gigabytes will be running in dual channel while the remaining four gigabytes will be running in single channel. And even that single channel performance won't really impact anything too negatively. So it's very safe and it's honestly fine to use this for programs that use a lot of memory such as editing 8K video because it's a lot better for the RAM to go over and use your single channel RAM rather than have it exceed the 16 gigabytes on board and end up using your computer's memory. Now for gaming, it's a bit of a different story. That's because no games really even use 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, nor will they anytime soon. So so you won't even be getting close to surpassing 16 gigabytes of dual channel performance in games. Uh, that's just how it's been for a long time and probably will be for a while as most games aren't super RAM dependent. Um, you know, they might use like 10 or 12 gigabytes, but you know, unless you're trying to run a bunch of programs in the background, you're not really ever going to see 16 gigabytes or more being used. What's even crazier is that in games, it actually helps your performance by increasing your RAM even when it's mismatched. And sure, it's not much, but it is a measurable difference, which I'll show you in this video. So I first first tried this out on a whim by ordering a 16 gigabyte stick of dual rank RAM from Crucial for a total of 24 gigabytes in my system. Now, you know, most of my games don't ever use more than 10 gigs, so I really wasn't expecting a performance improvement here, but I was testing this and I already made my conclusions when Jared's Tech put out his RAM video with very similar conclusions, so that was cool to see someone else do this. Um, there is so much more you can do also with this, you know, dual rank versus single rank, native resolution versus 1080p, but I'll get more into that in a little bit. In Jared's Tech's video, for example, in some cases, 24 gigabytes did better than many other configurations, so I think that might be the sweet spot for something like the G15, and I'll also talk about that in a second. Another thing I'll explain more at the end, but I'm just going to talk about very briefly, is that RAM affects 1080p a lot more than it does uh, QHD. So if you're running 1440p or above, swapping your RAM will not do nearly as much, but we'll talk about that, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. And spoiler alert, the same goes for laptops with both sticks upgradable too. I'm upgrading RAM on the Lenovo Legion 7i, and um, it did help a lot at 1080p, but not so much at QHD. But yeah, I'll link that here when it's done. All right, so let me talk about how you replace the RAM in the G15. All you gotta do is remove the screws on the sides and do not forget to remove these three screws in the middle. They're underneath these little uh, rubber caps and you can just remove those with like a screwdriver. Um, I just use a really small screwdriver like this one from this kit that I bought on Amazon, which I'll link in the description. And then once you've removed those, you can open it here. You can see that I've added another one terabyte SSD and here's the crucial RAM that I bought. It's dual rank, 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz. I'll link that in the description as I think it's it does perform a little better uh, being dual rank than single rank, but that's also one of those things that is kind of speculative if that's really a big factor or not. But as you'll see on the Crucial RAM, it has uh, memory banks on both sides of the stick. That seems to be better for performance for some reason. So all you gotta do is just take the old stick of RAM out, put the new one in, it slides right in there, put the cover back on, restart your laptop. It might take a couple of restarts for it to recognize. Um, just open your task manager, go to memory, and just confirm here that you have the proper size installed. It should show it here 
here and it should be running at 3200 megahertz if that's what your system is rated at. So yeah, it is a big misconception that a lot of people say it's not worth doing on a laptop with only one stick of RAM soldered. I think that's a big mistake to uh, count a laptop out of your purchasing decision because of that. Because even with laptops that have both sticks upgradable, it still isn't the biggest increase ever. Uh, maybe at 1080p, yes, but QHD, not so much. So, um, all right, now let's look at gaming performance. So we're going to be testing in hybrid mode, which is just using the laptop display itself. And we're going to be testing in DGPU mode. DGPU mode means we're bypassing NVIDIA Optimus. The only way to do that is by hooking up to an external screen through the USB-C port. This tends to give about a 10% increase in performance. What this does is it lets the NVIDIA GPU run a full 100% without the AMD Radeon graphics getting in the way. So there's a little bit of increase there. Uh, you'll see that in a sec. Also keep in mind, I redo all of my gaming tests for each video I make. So if you see some FPS numbers here that were different than a previous video, that's probably because there's just been a driver update since then, um, especially NVIDIA drivers, since those can change average FPS by a good little bit with each update. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Um, I feel like this past update was a little worse overall for um, FPS across the board, but it's been a while since I recorded these numbers, so it's probably going to be a little different, hopefully better by the next video. So first, let's talk about Time Spy. I'm not the biggest for synthetic benchmarks since they don't always translate well in games. Um, you can have a huge Time Spy score of over 11,000 or 12,000, yet only see like, you know, a one or two FPS increase in games. So um, not the biggest factor, but I will show that just so you can see it is good for like troubleshooting your system, making sure nothing's wrong, uh, making sure that it's performing up to par. So in hybrid mode on the left, 16 gigabytes uh, score is 95.73. And then on the right goes up a little bit, 96.35. The biggest difference here is that CPU score. You can see it went up a little over 200 points on the CPU. So that's where the RAM um, is helping more. It's not really helping more on the GPU side. It helps more on the CPU side. And now when hooked up to an external monitor, we're getting 98.03 on 16 gigs and then 99.57 on 24 gigs. Now you can see there's a bigger difference here in the CPU score. Um, we're going up almost 500 points here, which is nice to see. So there seems to be a bigger difference when you're actually hooked up to an external monitor, uh, when you're bypassing NVIDIA Optimus. So if your laptop has a MUX switch, you'll see a bigger difference there when it's not in hybrid mode. And just to push things even further, I went and did an undervolt on the GPU. This is what I do to kind of get the GPU score up a little more. As you can see, for some reason, the undervolt worked a little better on the GPU on the 24 gigs of RAM, but it did bring down the CPU score to about the same. So that was kind of interesting, but this could have been margin of error as undervolting definitely um, helps boost GPU performance, not as much CPU. And then to just push things really far, which is not necessary, but just worth noting, I went ahead and loaded the Strix G15 130 watt V BIOS on both. And there was actually a much bigger difference here in the CPU score. Um, if you are into V BIOS modding, I will have a video on this coming out later, but essentially on the 16 gigabytes, you know, graphic score is still up there for both, but the CPU score is like 1500 apart here. So it's safe to say that if you're going to do a V BIOS mod, you might want to look into upgrading your RAM. So first game here, we're doing the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark. This is the ultimate quality preset at 1080p in hybrid mode. We're getting 79 FPS on 16 gigs. We're getting 80 FPS on 24 gigs. So only a one FPS increase here, nothing too crazy. Switch it over to QHD and we're getting about the same. Not really any difference here. The only difference you can see is on the CPU FPS column um, that the CPU FPS did go up a little bit. So basically like the 1% lows, like the minimum frame rates have increased here. Now, when we hook up to an external monitor back to 1080p we're getting 87 88 so again only a one fps difference but look at those cpu fps we are increasing a little bit there so that's your one percent lows your frame stability so it might feel a little smoother even though the average is still about the same and then flipping over to qhd we're getting about the same again since it relies more on the gpu uh, than the cpu here but you will see that the cpu fps is slightly higher all right, so now switching over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, here's the settings I used here. I just did the highest graphics preset, and let's start with 1080p on hybrid mode. 16 gigabytes, I got 94 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider seems to love RAM a lot for some reason, so this is one of those games where we'll see the biggest difference. I would almost say that this game is an outlier for most games these days. Um, it's just for some reason super RAM hungry. I don't know why. And also this one really does vary sometimes with driver updates. Um, but yeah, so 16 gigabytes, I got 94. FPS, 24 gigabytes, 107 FPS. So that's a 
13 FPS increase in hybrid mode on 1080p, which is pretty crazy. That's definitely the most so far. And then we go to hook up to an external screen and we're getting about 108 FPS at 16 gigs and 117 at 24 gigs. So about a nine FPS increase here. Uh, so not as much, but that hybrid mode was pretty cool. Moving over to QHD in hybrid mode, we're getting 79 FPS on the left, 82 FPS with the RAM upgrade, just a three FPS increase. Definitely not gonna be noticeable, but that is nice to see an improvement at QHD because that isn't really seen very often. Throw it on an external monitor, we're getting 81 FPS on 16 gigs and 84 on 24 gigs. I did notice overall my Shadow of the Tomb Raider numbers were lower than usual for some reason with this Nvidia driver, but um, again, your, your mileage may vary here, but this did seem to be about the average um, difference between the two. I do think it'll still translate across different updates. So that's a three FPS increase here. Again, not noticeable really at QHD, but it is welcomed. All right, moving on to Forza Horizon 5. Um, I'm using the Extreme Graphics preset and here's my settings. All right, first let's talk about the 1080p hybrid mode. Um, we're seeing a two FPS increase when upgrading the RAM here, not much. This is a rather GPU dependent game, so not much of an increase there. When hooked up to an external monitor, we get a little bit of an increase across the board. Now there is a four FPS difference between the two, which is not bad. Again, probably not noticeable, but very welcomed. Playing in QHD on the laptop screen, there's a two FPS difference here. Going to external monitor, we have a three FPS difference between the two RAM configurations. So that's not bad, especially for QHD. And then Call of Duty can be a little bit more CPU dependent, depending on what's going on the screen. Um, rest in peace to the Warzone practice match which I used to get all these numbers which is no longer in the game. Thank you so much Activision for removing that and now making it like 10 times harder to record FPS numbers in Call of Duty because now I have to go into a solo match. Um, but when I got these numbers the practice match was still in the game so um, we're at QHD here and I usually went to go to two areas. On top of this building I saw a 5 FPS difference and then going down below uh, to where the ladder was I saw a 2 FPS increase. Not much, probably not noticeable especially when you hit over 90 FPS anyway, but again, a small increase. And CSGO, which I thought was going to have the biggest difference, um, I ran the Ulytical benchmark. These were my settings. At 1080p, we averaged 407 FPS. I only had time to run these in external monitor, but hybrid mode is quite a bit lower here because this game just really benefits from a muck switch. But yeah, anyways, so 1080p, we averaged 407 FPS with the better RAM. Did not really change at all. 401 actually went down a little bit for some reason. At 1440p, we got 332 FPS. And then with the better RAM, we got 336. So I thought this game was going to be more RAM dependent. I almost didn't even want to include it. So not really much of a change there, which is kind of odd. The only real thing I saw was a increase in 1% lows in that one, but still, I mean, not even much. Across the board, most of the 1% lows were only maybe a 1% or 2% increase. And this seems to be the case no matter what kind of configuration you're running, even if you have two replaceable RAM sticks, which I'll show in a later video. So yeah, not much of an increase across the board, uh, but it is there. Here is the total average increase that we saw across all of the games. So when you upgrade your RAM, uh, you're going to see slightly better frame rates with a small bump to your 1% lows as well. Um, it's like I said, it seems to help a lot more at 1080p than it does at QHD since QHD depends more on the GPU and better RAM really only helps the CPU. So I would say with a stick of RAM like this one being about 60 to $70, um, it's kind of debatable on whether that's a worthy upgrade for you. You know, if you're comfortable opening the laptop and installing it and that doesn't sound like a lot of money, then I say go for it. Uh, but if you really don't think you would notice the difference in like two or three FPS or a bump in your 1% lows, and you never really drop your resolution down to 1080p ever, then it's probably not worth doing unless you're just frame chasing. Um, and that's just my personal opinion. Obviously, I'm going to keep it in mind because why not? I already did it. You know, if you don't do it, don't think you're losing out on like 10 times more performance by not buying better RAM. Um, I would say, you know, if you're constantly maxing out over 16 gigs on your programs that you're running, say you're editing 8K video or 3D renderings and all sorts of stuff like that, then sure, you know, go ahead and go for the 24 gigs or even 40 gig configuration. But as for 40 gigs though, in Jared's tech video, 40 gigs was pretty much always slightly below 24. So not that it was ever performing bad, but um, the general consensus from what I've gathered on my own and from what others have shown me who have 40 gigs in their system is that you won't lose performance, but you won't gain quite as much compared to 24 gigs. So if you really need the extra RAM, go for 40 gigs, but otherwise I'd recommend 24 gigs for most people.
Anyways, I hope this helped out if you're considering upgrading RAM, and I hope it cleared up some of the misinformation out there on RAM upgrades. A lot of people love to hate on the G15 and other laptops like it because they think the soldered RAM is just the worst thing ever. Uh, well, obviously that's not the case. It's kind of a weird thought process to me that you would uh, factor out a laptop that could potentially be a lot better for you just because of something that you get really no noticeable increase in performance from. I mean, unless you really just need 64 gigs of RAM for some reason, which I mean, it's truly overkill for just about everything. So I don't know, just something that I personally just find weird that people would completely just dismiss a really good laptop because of something like that. And, you know, that's part of the reason why it's so thin and light to begin with. That's one of the compromises they unfortunately have to make. So, um, you know, and, th and that'll probably change in the future. I'm not saying I prefer it, but, um, you know, it's definitely not worth dismissing something because of that to me at least. Um, anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if this gave you any information and please subscribe to the channel. I got a lot of cool videos coming up. The RAM upgrade with the Legion 7i, the G15 versus the Legion 7i. I'm doing a whole video on vBIOS modding, so you don't want to miss any of that, so make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell. And thanks so much. See you guys next time.